July 4th, 1776, the 13 English colonies declared total independence from Mother England. Thus, the United States is born. Fast forward 238 years later, on July the 4th, 2014. One of the greatest things in CAW Entertainment is now born. Ladies and gentlemen, behold the magnum event in modern CAW history. Ladies and gentlemen, this is T.A.W. Organization. 
Well, for two of each of the stables, Shall be coming around. And the order of things will be this. The first two that were drawn at random earlier today will be starting the competition. As soon as one of them loses, the, the next one will arrive. And so will the fourth when one of them, when one of the others are have um, lost the competition. The ones left standing at the end of the gauntlet shall be the third winner, and they will be the first to be made the TAW Top Core Champions of the Year. Soon after that, we shall have a 20 women one style battle war. And in our organization, we like to show our ladies days. So yes, 20 days, one room, everyone has to be taken off the top row to both feet standing on the ground. We all know the rules. But there is a difference here. The one left standing will automatically become our very first, the proud, the beautiful, the powerful, T.A.W.'s day. So that's the first few games out in the locker room from here to you. And as the man said, and we not we will have our main event. Another Rumble Style Battle Royal. This time with 30 men battling over the top floor. This thing's going to be a little you see, in this one, we will crown three Magnet Champions as follows. The first, second, and third will be receiving such championships. But we will do things in an innovative way. The third to last person who remains in, the, in this very room and gets tossed out will be given the opportunity to be given the very first T.A.W.L.T. Championship. A championship that can only be defended under extreme circumstances. May it be four matches, other matches, two or three matches, other than four matches, three or six matches, chaos chamber, or extreme rules, and so on and so forth. You can only defend this on extreme circumstances. And no, we will not have a 24 7 rule for we care about the integrity, both physical and psychological, of our work. The second one to be known and be as I will receive our second most prestigious award, the TAW Multinational Championship, to be recognized the world over. And the one man, the one man who's left standing in this very way after the storm is set on the bus is clear, will be the proud, the man, as if to say, here in T.A.W. He will be crowned the T.A.W. Ultimate Champion of the World. So there you have it, my dear spirits here in the new world. The rundown for our first episode. I hope you enjoy as much as we enjoy providing you with the quality entertainment you so like to look for. For now, my dear CW fans, we must depart. There is much work to be done. And here will be never rest. Never. Until we meet again, this is your present John Henry. There you have it for the man for the man himself. Let's don't waste any time and get the reaction live! Oh man, oh man, that was bad, wasn't it? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the following is a tag team open match. And that's for the TAW Tag Core Championship. The people of the party represented the FFO Class 1 organization, the Burger King, and Chuck E. Team. Well, we got the first team participating in our little tag team gauntlet. The FFO making their presence felt. Straight from SMF Story Mode Federation. And you remember how dominant these guys were. So, let's see if they can catch that much dominance here in TAW as well. I mean, 
these guys were oh team back over there but let's see who their opponents are shall we and wouldn't you know it is one of the most legendary teams in all of CAW history and yes we got them here on TAW yeah I know you know these guys <laughs> The multiple time tag team champions over at No DQ CAW make their presence felt and, <laughs> and as you heard, we here at TAW have completely made it so that the new Nintendo Order, formerly known as the Nintendo World Order, will be reborn, reformed, and ready for anything. And this time, I think they're ready to catch another tag team um, goal added to their resume. Will they be able to do that, or will they fall victim to the FFO's um, malignant assaults like they did on the League Wars? Do you guys remember the League Wars? I hope so, because if you think the League Wars was good, this is far better. And speaking of this, let's get it started, shall we? Oh, nice spinning drop kick by Mario to um, Chuck E. Cheese there. Burger King wrenching the arm of Luigi, and he goes for the... Oh! Wrenching on, wrenching on, dropping, oh, dropping the knee right in the, in the shoulder socket. And trust me, that hurts. And now, um, Chuck E. Cheese tossing, uh, Mario, oh, hot shotting him from the inside out. And now, Luigi in the meantime goes for that nasty spinning belly to belly to the Burger King. Now, Burger King tossing, uh, Luigi to the road to Oh, I thought he was gonna go for a flapjack, but nice evasion by Luigi into that nasty DDT. And he follows it up with an end cut for good measure. Oh, you thought I wasn't gonna say that? Oh, look at, look at Chuck E. Cheese being dirty. Look at that, that'd be sick, that'd be sick. He only lucky that there are no disqualifications in this, in this kind of matches. It is a tornado tag after all, but still, that'd be sick. That was for you, Bob, that was for you. Now, oh, now Mario has that um, steps which uh, <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese was intended to use, but he still uses them to ram uh, Mario to the floor with a running um, tackle. Now Mario controls the head of Chuck E. Cheese, and Chuck E. Cheese instead tosses him to the turnbuckle. And in the meantime, the Burger King just drops um, Luigi on his head with a nasty DDT. Now going behind. Luigi and, ooh, nice snapmare by Luigi right there. And he drops the elbows on the shoulders of the Burger King. Meanwhile, ooh, Mario just hits uh, Chuck E. Cheese with a nasty jawbreaker there. Now he's controlling the head and, ooh, four um, elbows match to the face of Chuck E. Cheese. Wrenching the arm. And it's, he's planning something, I don't know. All I know, ooh, nice anchor by Mario to Chuck E. Cheese. And Luigi rebounds on the Burger King into the steps. I mean into the turnbuckle, I'm sorry. And, oh, uh, you smell it? You smell it? You smell it? Oh, it wasn't a suplex, but it was still a flip toss from the turnbuckle, and that still hurts. And so does that short lariat and the leg drop. Now, oh, look at the agility of, of Chuck E. Cheese there. That's a big man. That's like six foot, six foot eight, like 300 pounds, and he still uh, did that uh, planche on Mario. And speaking of agility, ooh, that mule kick over to um, the Burger King by Luigi there, who's now holding Burger King's uh, arm, and oh, nice reversal into that shoulder um, block by um, the Burger King to Luigi, which goes behind the Burger King again. Meantime, you got uh, Chuck E. Cheese controlling the head of uh, Mario, and he hits him with a foreign smash. And Mario retaliates with a snapmare. Oh, look at, look at you can just be dirty again with that nasty, uh, low blow. Let me sick. Let me sick. Oh! You saw how the Burger King dropped, uh, Luigi? He almost hit him in the steps there. <laughs> Things are getting a little out of control here. But now, oh! He was trying to go for another slingshot, uh, body splash. Uh, Chucky Chill was, but <laughs> Mario got out of the way. And now he started his little, uh, comeback going on. Five for Doom, if you want to call him that. <laughs> now he gets him up. And he goes for that. Ba -bum -ba -bum. 
right there from Mario to Chucky e. T. And and now he's going for a pull. One. Oh! Nice save by the Burger King to his pal, ensuring that they still have a chance of being the very first TAW Tag Core Champions of the world. And oh! We just saw what happened. That was it right there. The mushroom surprise. Mushroom surprise from Mario. Now, oh! Only got a count of two thanks to the Burger King. Two, two. Lovely assistance by BK there. And he manages to um, hit Mario with a shin buster. And now Luigi trying to get that pin and oh! Somehow, some way, the Burger King decided not to off. Uh, I don't know what happened there. It must have been some miscommunication or something. Now, oh! Elbow shot to uh, Luigi from Chuck E. Cheese right there. And now he's going for that Tiger Bomb. And he's going to get it. One, two. No, Mario was going to go there to like try to break it up, but still. Oh, who is it? Who is it? Oh! Chuck E. Cheese got with Luigi and he got him. Oh! Can't be a kid. Can't be a kid for Chuck E. Cheese to Luigi. This is going to be it. One, two. No, ladies and gentlemen, two to the two. And now he's grabbing uh, Luigi. Oh, headbutt to the back. While Mario gives a throat thrust to um, Burger King on the, outs on the outside. And all oh, only to the count of two. Chuck E. Cheese almost got it, but that didn't happen. But, oh! Now Luigi got him in a, in a sleeper hole. But oh, nice save by the Burger King. Making sure that um, he doesn't tab uh, Chuck E. Cheese. Oh, what is it? Oh, what is it? The Whopper! The Whopper connects hard on Luigi's stomach right there. And now the Burger King dra dra dragging um, <laughs> Luigi's body like a carcass. Hey, with a one, two, oh! How close was that? And now, oh, a count of two to uh, Mario by uh, Chuck E. Cheese there. And, oh, STO and a choke from Chuck E. Cheese to Mario. Look at him being dirty. Be sick. Now, oh, nice toss to the uh, ropes by, I mean, to the turnbuckle by Luigi. And, oh, we got, uh, Chuck E. Cheese got him on a, on a torture rack. He's right on the tap. He's right on the tap. Oh, Mario does tap. And uh, did you see a save by uh, Burger King? He didn't know uh, that, that, um, uh, what you call his pine buster Luigi to make sure that he doesn't break? That was awesome. That's how I was saying, that was an awesome, uh, backup by, uh, <laughs> the Burger King and showing that to be left standing in this tag team gauntlet. But now, as the rules of the gauntlet, they are going to have to keep on fighting. No rest whatsoever. And look who their opponents are right now. One of the most <laughs> assertive tag teams I've seen. And this is why I, uh, we at Triple Star, we at TAW sign them in. It's none other than the Thunderbolt. Deadly as they could get. And I expect big things from these guys, I'll tell you. And you, should, and you guys at home should too. And now that we got all that out of the way, we begin the second uh, quarter, the second third of this uh, tag team gauntlet. The, I know that the FFO must be spent after fighting le the legendary uh, tag team known as the Mario, Bro the Super Mario Brothers, but it seems that they're handling themselves quite nicely here. I mean, look at Burger King applying pressure to Venom right there. That's not an easy feat to do because look, Venom is a big man, I'll tell you. In the meantime, Chuck E. Cheese um, trying to pack up on Bullseye. And that, and I think he's doing a good job too. And, oh. And cut by Venom to uh, the Burger King right there. And he drops the legs for good measure there. And now what's... What's he... Oh, he tried to hold it to his head off. Bullseye it to Chuck E. Cheese, but that didn't work, I guess. Meanwhile, we got the Burger King wrenching the arm of Venom. Oh, they break it from Bullseye to the Chuck E. Cheese right there. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we got Chuck E. Cheese wrenching the arm of um, Bullseye and tosses it to the turnbuckle. And that fell miserably. <coughs> Excuse me again. Now we got Venom 
Oh, punch in the head out of um, Burger King. Oh, I thought it was going to go for something aerial, but that didn't happen. But what's going to happen is, oh, the late vertical suplex by Chuck E. Cheese. I'm the power and agility right there. Now, we got um, Chuck E. Cheese being tossed to the turnbuckle. Oh, nice cover up by um, Burger King, but that wasn't enough, I guess. But I guess that uh, jump swing did it. He was enough to give um, Venom a nice headache. Or maybe not, as demonstrated by that um, high rake. All the excitement and action going on now. Oh, is he going to go for that? Oh, he just dropped his um, buttocks on, the, on his on both sides of um, lower abdomen. Uh, this guy, uh, Chuck E. Cheese, did. Say what you will, but that still hurts. And speaking of that, oh, Russian leg sweep. Let me quote my colleague from S from uh, FBH of Tim and Angel even a rat, even a pizza eating rat could make one of those. Well, actually a mouse, but you know what I mean, right? <laughs> Meanwhile, we got Venom getting a, a fistful, a fistful on his crotch by <laughs> by Burger King. Who was trying to set up with another jump swing DDT? Now let me quote my other colleague now from SCAW, Lone Star 033. Repeat moves for the win. <laughs> Now we got, oh, nice running headbutt by um, Chuck E. Cheese to, Bert, to Bullseye. Oh, and he lands himself with a slingshot body splash and a couple of punches to the face of Bullseye by Chuck E. Cheese for the good measure. Oh, did you see the elevation on that? Magnum um, Samoa drop by Venom to the Burger King. And then we had a little simultaneous um, <laughs> pounding over from Venom to the King and from uh, Chuck E. Cheese to both sides. And yet another jump swing DDT from uh, the Burger King to Venom. Well, if it works, I guess. And now, Venom's gonna try to go ahead and let, oh! Little too late there on the landing, buddy. Now, oh! Chuck E. Cheese was trying to do the same and he also suffered the exact same fate and pays for it with a el jumping elbow. Spinning slam by a uh, bullseye right there. That was cool. And so was that running bulldog by the big bad mouth there, Chuck E. T. Oh, headbutt with a follow top to the Burger King by a uh, Venom. And now he's gonna try to make him tap. Is he gonna tap? Is he gonna tap? Is he gonna tap? No, Burger King does not tap. You have got to admire that kind of resiliency there. Even though he went through hell and high water with the Mario, but he's still holding his own very well right there. And now, oh, Bullseye was trying to go aerial against um, Chuck E. Cheese, and Chuck E. Cheese makes him pay for it with that running um, shoulder tackle and a couple of punches to the face for good measure. And, oh, uh, come on, Venom, nah. We just, re we just installed that thing, and, ooh, I just noticed that Bullseye got out of some kind of, um, Submission hold there, thanks in part to the ropes. And now Venom tosses um, the Burger King outside. Oh, nice nightmare right there. Takedown by um, Bullseye to the Burger King. I mean to Chuck E. Cheese. Speaking of the Burger King, he's been put on my table. Come on, man. No. No. Come on, Venom. No. Don't do it. No. No. That's slow. No, 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 no. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. He broke the table. Bro. Bullseye gets hit with a Tiger Bomb by Chucky Cheese and FFO wins again. Surprisingly, now they've gone through a complete set of hell if you ask me. And they deserve that victory, but now, now it's time to win all of this. It's gonna get bloody, it's gonna get nasty. It's gonna get to the point that we're gonna find out who will be our first Tag Core Champion. Yes, folks, the maximum exponents of, tag, of the tag division back at AC, when ACAW was still around are here at TAW. The Night Warriors, John Tobin and D, along with Felicia and Morrigan, have signed a contract here at TAW, and you will see some crazy stuff and guarantee thrills from these guys. 
Now we got the two male members trying to establish themselves as the tag core champions. The first in the history, the young history of TAW. But we have a big, big roadblock in the form of the FFO. And if you saw how they had those two for victories, you know exactly what I mean with this. So best of luck, you will need it. And now the final third of the tag gauntlet is on the way. Mm, and cut from Jonathan Bain to Chuck E. Cheese. And uh, oh, a spinning armbar takedown by uh, the Burger King to um, the end. He finally set up with that death lock. With the arm wrenching death lock right there. Now, oh, power slam from the Burger King to D. As basic as it is effective and painful. Now we're going to another clinch. Headlock by D to the Burger King. And in the meantime, oh! Uh, uh, Chucky Cheese was trying to go for a flapjack, but <laughs> John Tobin just countered it to a DDT just now. And a Russian leg sweep from the Burger King to uh, John Tobin. Proving again that even the, even the monarch of burgers can do another one. That one was for you, uh, Timmy. <laughs> Oh, nice punch from the outside to um, John Tobain by the King there. A little shade of the League Wars if you ask me. Oh, that almost looked like the Paris, like the Paris punch from um, SAW's um, Captain Sparrow. You know what uh, Burger King just did to John Tobain, I mean. Oh, two Savate kicks and a spinning um, jump kick right there to, um, to uh, Chuck E. Cheese from D. And... John Tobain lands the, the, the legs on the, on the face of the Burger King and follows it up with a flapjack. Oh, and a power slam from, and a running power slam from D to Chuck E. Cheese. Man, excitement is not even the word that we should use here. We should like invent a word that should describe excitement and thrills higher than excitement and thrills. If you got any ideas, just let me know, all right? <laughs> And now speaking of excitement, oh, nice spinning um, belly to belly from Chuck E. Cheese to D. And now we got John Tobain hitting the 10 punch of the bed, but interrupted by the Burger King. He didn't like that order very much, I guess. Oh, nice reversal from a look at into a uh, powerball and from Chuck E. Cheese to the end. He follows it up with that nasty uh, bulldog. Now D makes him pay for it with that kick and punishing him in, in the turnbuckle. In the meantime, we got John Tobain holding the head of him. I, holding the head of, uh, I holding the arm of the Burger King, but the Burger King retaliates with an arm drag of his own and drops it on the canvas there. Now he goes behind it. Oh, what an innovative kind of suplex that Burger King did there. And he goes flying, but that leg drop did not show and uh-oh. John Tobin seems to be uh, pissed pardon the language, but that's what it is. And here we go. I think he's gonna go for that. <laughs> Fight with the boat. And now D, D's holding to, oh, D was holding to Chuck E. Cheese into a cattle clutch, but that did not work. It was on the rope. And now D just goes for that serious uh, shoulder block there and just robbing the face of Chuck E. Cheese with his boot right there. And now, here we go, one, not even to the kind of one there. Charging mortal right there from D to uh, John Tobain there. In the meantime, um, I mean from D to uh, Chuck E. Cheese, I'm sorry. And that was enough to give him a pin. And now we got our first ever Tag Core Champions of the World. Congratulations are in order to the uh, defenders of the dark on achieving maximum triumph here and making history here at TAW. Serious congratulations to T J to D and John Tobey for that su for that success. And right now, one thing that I know most many want to see and most everybody, let's put it that way, the third, the 20 woman r rumble style to determine our very first James Champion. 
of the world. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, one of um, Superman's most um, dastardly adversaries has been signed to TAW. Will she be the one to make history? I mean, sure, she made it at number one, and number one is never a good, coverable number in a Rumble style match, but there have been people who have been in number one and made it seriously large and made it to the end of the match, so let's not discard anything, especially with how volatile this lady is. Now let's see who drew number two, shall we? Bravo, Oscar Lima, Sierra. When you know it, it's another member of the Thunderbolt. So which one will it be? Let's find out. Yes, folks, Sunbird. The vocal, the vocal beat up her here. The lady who's making vocal beat down a, a thing of beauty is signed up here at TAW. And she is part of the Thunderbolt. And most likely her partner, her female partner, Musto, will be part of this as well. Now, will she be the one who brings the gold since her team wouldn't do it? Or will she too get taken out? That's a question that we must ask, and that we must ask that also of her part or her tag partner, uh, Moonstone. And let's see what happens from here on in, shall we? This is gonna be exciting. That's the only thing that is certain. Now let's get the shoe in the road. Now we got uh, Songbird holding Livewire, tossing her to the turnbuckle, and I think she wants to make the first elimination rather quickly. And that's a good strategy. You don't want people to be there. You want to be alone in this thing until the whole 30 are done. And you could, and you could like be the first one, the only one left. And keep yourself in as much rest as possible while that happens. It's difficult, but not impossible, I'll tell you. And now, Lightwire is trying to toss um, Songbird out, but that didn't happen. Oh, spinning backhand chop, uh, spinning fist to a... Uh, Thunderbolt, uh, Thunderbolt, uh, Songbird by Livewire, and the third participant of the night, none other than the malicious monarch, the toad-hating uh, tyrant, Dark Queen, becomes the third participant in this contention. As she wasted a little time of going after Songbird, I am damn sure that she has no, um, pretensions about taking everybody out here. I mean, that's the only way to win here, so... <laughs> right? Now we got a uh, light wire taking on on the dark queen. Look at Songbird. Well, so in this in the rumble, the best way to win is to be an opportunist to take care of somebody who someone else has made out. Hey, let's face it. There's no rules in the rumble, so why why make them? <laughs> and who's the fourth participant? None other than the beauty from Nippon herself. The Nitaichi Queen of Bounce, the Ninja Bee, SNK's favorite lady, my Shiranui. And now let's see who she's with. And she goes after the, the Dark Queen. She was trying to look for a partner, do -si do but still. Hey! All we know is that she's here. She wants a piece of the action. She wants to be the first TAW Dance Champion in history. Will she make it? Let's find out. <coughs> um. <coughs> Excuse me again. <coughs> I don't know what's wrong with my throat. Well, actually, I know, but I'd rather not say, right? <laughs> Let's just focus on the action here, shall we? And, oh, like we almost got our uh, songbird out. And while that happened, oh, God. Here she comes, the baddest babe in the world. Candy Sucks has joined the fray. And while that happens, we got our very first elimination. 
My Shiranui has been eliminated from this contention. And she will have to um, try to earn the gold in some other way, in some other time. In the meantime, we got Dark Queen trying to do the same to a songbird there. And oh, look at, look at like why it's stamp, stamp, stamping on my channel with her um, heels on my, on, with her. <laughs> look at that. It's, it's not right, man. It's not right. Now, who will be the fifth participant or not? The sixth participant, my bad. Ooh. Let's go to the baby people. Go to the boys! Yep. One of video games, most unsung yet most charismatic um, character, Cindy Crawford from Thunder Force makes her way into the ring. And as she does, both Lightwire and Songbird get eliminated. And this is why it's so important not to become neither number one or number two on our Rumble style match because that's exactly what happens. And now they're trying to get Cenis out by the fact that she just got here, but Cenis is like, I think not. Because <laughs> that's another thing, it's not just about winning the Rumble, it's about being the survival there. And in, in order to survive, you gotta do whatever it takes. And speaking of survivors, who shall be the next survivor here? Oh boy, this lady be very, better be careful, very careful because now comes one of the biggest powerhouses in the dance division, none other than the Dark Gargoyle herself, the Mona, who's wasting little time to take on the Dark Queen and try to get her out of this contention. And she, if anybody has the power to get people out easy is the Mona, let's put it that way, I mean, look at her, she's a giant of a woman. This woman is six foot, six foot six. Then again, <laughs> it's doubtful that she's a human being. And, oh, did you see that? I was talking all that about the moon and she just gets kicked by Dark Queen. Oh man, look at her. She's just staring a hole into Dark Queen. I smell the rivalry going on. And I also smell the fresh perfume of someone else. Someone beautiful yet very macabre and very manipulative who gets her way in here. None other than the other female of the Thunderbolts, the other day within the Thunderbolts organization, Moonstone, who is his little time going against um, Candy Sucks. And Candy Sucks was even less time trying to get her out of this contention. Meanwhile, Dark Queen was trying to do the same to our Senate Scrubber, but that was no avail. But that DDT must Excuse me, must have done it. And so was that vault over from Candy Sucks to Moonstone. Well, I'm sorry about the Moonstones. They they are not getting any gold this time. They will have to condemn for it later on in the course of the TAW history, right? And while Moonstone is gone, another dame enters into the fray. None other than the female represent of the FFO Cosmo organization Wendy Thomas and while she gets in the Dark Queen gets uh, Candy Sucks out of this contention and to think that she was one of my favorites and I think Senna's kind of get a grasp or something uh, Dark Queen is not letting Senna get a grasp on it Dark Queen just wants to get Wendy Thomas out on her own but I don't know why I don't know if that was some why strategy of, of Dark Queen trying to do that because if you notice she just couldn't wasn't able to and who, who is uh, Dark Queen laughing at? Oh is she laughing at candy sucks? Oh no that wouldn't be a that wouldn't be a good idea madame and now she's now she's eliminated send his Crawford out man she's just taking everybody out isn't she Dark Queen is not playing around I'm telling you and someone that's not playing around either is our current um our current entry right now from the land of Sasser land from the video game Shantae which is one of the under, most underrated video game games out there comes the villain of that tale Risky Boots she wants to add the who, who, no doubt wants to add the TAW Dave Championship to the treasure trove over at Sasser land right <laughs> and 
as you could see as you could see uh, Risky Boots and win the tag team to get Darkwing out of the contention and while the Darkwing is out another day is said this time none other than Quahawk's very own Quahawk's most hated Meg Griffin who's wasted little time to try to get Risky Boots out of the contention a couple, um, uh, assisted by uh, Wendy but that didn't work at all and she made Wendy pay for her failure by hitting her with a jawbreaker and now oh Risky Boots could have gotten Wendy out but for some reason um, Meg Griffin got in the way and now we got a participant number 12 coming in there and it's none other than everybody's favorite of uh, real lady ended out there a representative of the Night Warriors, Felicia. And now she wastes a little time going after Wendy. That's another little uh, rematch from uh, that would have been another little rematch from the League Wars if you remember that. Now Whiskey Boots trying to get uh, Felicia out of the contention, and Wendy's trying to do the same to make Griffin. Who gonna get out? Who gonna get kicked out? If anyone. Ooh. <laughs> Felicia using the reflexes of what the cat, right? <laughs> and Wendy also trying to stay in. I mean, Meg Griffin trying to stay in here as well. And who will be the next participant? The other member, the other female member of the Night Warriors, and who happens to be the leader of the Night Warriors, Morgan Ensland, the, Succu the succubus queen. The Sukubian sensation, as I like to call her. And in the meantime, we got Felicia trying to get whiskey boots out there. That didn't happen. And now we got a oh vertical suplex on her. Did you see how her head landed on the on the rope? It's a wonder that the whiplash effect didn't like damage her her her, her neck. Damn, Meg Griffin is the psychotic. Jesus, Meg, take it easy. It's a wrestling match. Oh well. You do whatever it needs to be done to win, but come on, that's a little more, that's a little exaggerating there. And now who's coming in there? Oh, the represent, the late, the, the day, the female representative of the FFO comes in, Samus Aran. And while she's getting her way into the ring, Felicia is getting kicked out. And now Samus is trying to get Wendy out of the contention. We're having too many flashbacks for two, two, two League Wars around here, aren't we? If anybody has a, doesn't know what League Wars is, I suggest you check here on our station, Triple Star 100. Trust me, you will have a lot of fun watching that. As much fun as I, as I hope that you're having watching this magnanimous match here done just for you. Now Morgan has Meg Griffin now, but decides decides to uh, charge his attention to a uh, risky boot for some reason. Oh, did you see it? That's power right there. Meg Griffin hitting that vertical on on Samus, and Samus is one of the uh, one of the one of uh, another powerhouse in this um in the Dane's division. And, uh oh, Meg is napping. Meg is napping. I don't know what's going on, but I know that risky boots just drop kick uh, Morgan out of the equation. That much I could tell. And while someone hits that nasty um, um, spinning power slam to uh, Wendy, another contender enters the scene. None other than La Bella Assassine, Abilene the Grand Prix. You know, from the game of Assassin's Creed Liberation. And I'm very glad that, that, we signed, that she got signed here to TAW. I expect big things from her. Well, even if she's not the one who wins this contention. But sure that with her skill set, her strength, and her resolve, she'll be able to be the one left standing. We can only tell by watching this by watching this match. And speaking of that, ooh, two women did it, two they did it to a risky move by Meg and Samu. That was impressive. And so it was that arm drag by Wendy to our Avalee. Now who's coming to the oh snap? Oh, snap from Master Atlanta, Georgia comes. 
None other than the dead, the, the Grandmaster Grady herself, Madea Simmons, who has a real time of going to her, um, to her co-worker. I believe that, oh, nice spinning S reverse STO by uh, Madea. Kind of like a sister Aveline by uh, Ray Wyatt over there at WWE. And while that happens, Whiskey Boots gets kicked out of the contention. And Aveline is going and throwing all the stops here. Because now we got the uh, another big powerhouse in the dance community, Madea Simmons. And now Madea is going to try to get um, Aveline out. Is she going to do it? She's going to do it? Yes, folks, she does it. Madea was able to eliminate Aveline the Grand Prix from this contention. And now she's going to try to go against Wendy Thomas. Trying to make a name for herself. I mean, she just got here, but if you notice, she got, she's got she been the toughest. She's one of the toughest women that you ever know in the media. So, um, yeah. But will she be, but will all that toughness be able to help her make it as the, as the champion of the TAW Dames Division? Let's find out, shall we? And let's also find out who's next. Oh, oh yeah! One of my personal favorites. Yes, I'm sorry. I'm gonna be biased. I'm sorry for my bias, but one of my personal favorites in this in this whole league, my home girl, La Belle Mufette, Fifi La Fu. Let's see if uh, let's see how far she makes it into this, right? <clears throat> and I. <clears throat> Excuse me, <coughs> excuse me again. And I guess she doesn't make it too far. I think the I think the uh, record right there, the quickest um, uh, the quickest elimination right there in this contention, because she just got kicked out by Samus somehow. And Wendy Thomas also got kicked out thanks to Madea Simmons. And now the two powerhouses handling each other. It's like having two beautifully decorated Avon tanks against each other, isn't it? And speaking of that, we got a brand new contender coming in scene. In the scene, no, none other than the Saiyan sensation herself, the Queen of Bees, Sun Pan, who wasted little time going after Samus and helping Madea Simmons eliminate Samus Aran from this contention. And now, ooh! You need to have a lot of leg strength and power and agility to do something to a woman as big as Madea, I'll tell you right there right now. Now Madea's gonna try to make her pay for it by taking her out, but ooh, that didn't happen. In the meantime, we're gonna have our 19th participant coming on the aisle. I wonder who it is. Oh crap. We got Madness Personified coming into the aisle. A woman that is just Pure and unadulterated sociopathy, Roxy. This woman, she scares me. I'm sorry, I will say it. This woman scares me legit. Cause she's just, she's just insane, man. Now let's get back to the action, shall we? Roxy tossing Madea in, and she was, see how insane she is. She, she thinks she could try to like pick her up in the air, side. And, ooh, nice bulldog for Madea to some Pine. And, pa and Roxy picking up the scrap and grabbing Pine, but Pine would not let her have any of that. And now we got the last participant coming down the aisle in, in four more seconds. I wonder who that will be while Roxy gets played with that two-woman DDT. Oh, crap. You thought one mad woman was enough. Now we got none other than the Joker's wife. Yes, you heard me right, folks. Wife. Ring and everything. Back in the rock room. None other than Harley Quinn. And while she makes it here inside the... While she makes it into the ring, Roxy gets kicked out by some pawn. And now we got the last three contenders left in this Magnum 20 Woman Dames Royale for the TAW Dames Championship. Who shall it be? who shall remain in this ring and will claim the gold. Now for some reason they hardly interrupted Medea. I don't know, I, I don't know if that's gonna come back to bite her in that beautiful little booty of hers and oh man, the Joker's gonna freaking kill me for saying that, I could tell. I could tell you that right now. Oh well. 
And now we got the three last contenders left. Who will become our very first TAW um, Dave's champion? Will it be Madea Simmons? Will it be Sun Pond? Or will it be Harley Quinn? We will find out right now. As Madea is pushing Sun Pan outside. Oh, I thought that was going to be it right there. Oh, look at the upper body strength of um, Pan right there. And now Harley Quinn trying to do the same to Madea. Now she's going to try to pu push her out of the contention. But nah, Madea's way too big for that. It would take too many people to do that. And see, that's how you do it. You get someone else to try to get the bigger, the bigger threat from this operation. So you could be all alone and they almost did it, but almost does not cut it in this business. You either do or do not, you, <laughs> you do not try. You either do, do or do not, there's no try. As said by Yoda. Now why am I repeating myself here? Oh well. Now Harley Quinn trying to get Pan out. And now we got uh, Madea helping her out with that. It's gonna happen. How are they gonna do it? Oh! She held on by a threat. And uh, mind you, that was two people. Two people who are larger than her doing that. Oh! Marshall has kicked to your Harley Quinn. And she gets sent to the outside. And now it's only these two ladies. The young versus the old. Age versus experience. Who will become the TAW's first T uh, day champion? Now, Sean utilizing her strength trying to get Madea out. Madea will not buckle at all. Now Madea getting behind Sean Pond. Tosses Pond to the rope. And now she's holding up for dear life. But it's Madea. Madea, is she going to do it? Is she going to do it? Is Madea going to get it done? Yes, folks. Madea Simmons wins. She becomes the very first T.A.W. Dames Champion of the World. Congratulations are in order for the most whoop ass woman in the whole South. As she has become the first ever TAW Day Champion in her young history. Serious congratulations to you, ma'am. You deserve it after going through hell through 30 through 29 other women. Dame, should I say? <laughs> And now, do what everybody was waiting for. 30 men, 3 destinies, 3 titles. Let's get to the action. No more cutting away. No more time wasting. Let's do this live. Yes, folks, ladies and gentlemen, the most, the most terrible criminal uh, uh, powerhouse in Miami has made is making his debut here in the CAW world, come uh, courtesy of TAW Triple Star Amazing Wrestling. I think he was in another CAW league. I don't remember where. All I know is that he's making his debut here, and he aims to take control. Of either the multi, uh, either the OD multinational, or the big one, the ultimate championship, and he'll pull off all the stops to get what he wants, just as he did before. But will he make it? Well, with the competition he's got, let's see if he does. And part of the competition is the man coming in here, and what did you know it? Look who it is! Another good old body of ours. 
from Back in the League World. Yes, folks, a veteran from SMF Story Mode Federation, a winner of multiple, um, multiple titles over there, one of the most prestigious, um, one of the most prestigious wrestlers that league ever had, and he is here on TAW, leading the pack of the FFO and trying to bring greatness to the greatness to their stable, which will he be able to do it by being either the OD. The multinational, or better yet, the ultimate champion. Only time and his performance on this ring will be able to tell. Then again, he made it to number two, so number two is never a favorable number, and we know that. And he's even worse than you number one, like Tony was. But things do happen in the wild world of CAW and wrestling in general. And speaking of wild things, we got Tony dominating the the. Colonel right there. Now he does it to the ropes and he wants to he wants to start his early, which I don't blame him, right? Now we got these two men in white <laughs> attacking one another. Two well dressed sharply men in white trying to eliminate one another and trying to become the first of three uh titles that we're giving in with this. And who shall accompany them right now? <laughs> Okay, official, I'm legitimately scared. I'm done here. I don't know. Oh no, oh no, he's close. No, no, don't let him take me. Don't let him take me. OMG, it's EXE. And he's trying to, he is the god of mayhem, the god of murder. And if he wins this match, he could be the god of TAW. If he becomes the last man standing. Or he could be the god of hardcore if he becomes the OD champion. Or he could be the god of nations if he wins the multinational championship. But we can only see if we could stick around and watch this whole fight. That's the only thing that's certain. And speaking of certainty. We certainly got a brand new participant coming in at number four. It's no one, it's no one other than the corrupt cop from the jungle, the sergeant, the trainer, I love Sir Harris, one of the most dastardly villains in movie history, and he has made it here in TAW, and he, all he wants is gold, let's just see if he'll get it. Now we got the colonel trying to get Tony out of here, oh, we almost did it, but like I said earlier, Almost doesn't cut it. And now Alonso Harry's trying to arrest EXV. How the hell are you trying to arrest the god? I don't know. I, I don't know about that. Oh, we almost got him, but not quite. Oh, nice flapjack from uh, Alonso Harris to EXV there. In the meantime, we got uh, the fifth participant in this contention. None other than the savior of Caramoon. The beast incarnate, literally in this case. Arboron, who was a little time going after the colonel and applying that deadly uh, German suplex, landing him in the in his upper shoulders. And now, Lance Harris is trying to get rid of Arboron as fast as, as soon as he got here. Let's see if he gets it done. Nope. He just hits him with the horns in the head, and that must be hurtful. Horn appendages. I don't know what it is. All I know is that they hurt. Just the race of everything that. Albrun does just like the spinning power slam right there. Now the Colonel trying to get him out. In the meantime, who's gonna get in? Oh boy, it's gonna get interesting here. Now comes the son of, uh, of Dracula himself, the grandson of the dragon. None other than the Dampir Savior, Alucard. Who is a little time going at the EXC. Oh, we got the savior of the dark versus the, the ultimate dark. That would be that would be a match I would like to see happen. 
we'll, we'll have to talk to the bookies about that. Then again, I don't think we may need to do that. I mean, dark attracts dark, I guess. And speaking of that, we got Arbron trying to get rid of Tony Montana. And that didn't happen. Now, Aluka trying to do the same with the Colonel, and that didn't happen either. And earlier, we had our EXE hitting um, Alonso Harris right in the groin, being dirty, but then again, dirty begets dirty, so I don't think I could mind much, despite it all. And, oh, our first elimination of the night, and what do you know, it was the Colonel, Holland Sanders, who gets kicked out of this elimination, and at the same token, Tony Montana gets rid of Arboron. So they'll have to contend to either one of the three prestigious titles in TAW on another occasion. But this one won't be it. Now Tony trying to get rid of um, Alucard and that doesn't happen. Alucard is just too strong. I demonstrated with that right there. Now Alucard trying to get rid of Tony and at the same token EXC punishing on, on Alonso Harris. Ooh, nasty chop. Nice trying to get Alonso Harris out of this contention. In the meantime, we got Tony Montana hitting a flurry on Alucard, but Alucard is just too big and too strong. But uh, he's not too big and strong to try to like resist. I mean, he could resist, but let's see if he could like make it far. In the meantime, we got, oh boy, oh boy, here come the madness. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, before there was the mask, before there was that pool, there was this man right here that came in, that Karipa, also known as Jello Skin Wacky Man. And while the Creeper gets in, Tony Montana gets out, courtesy of Alucard. And now we got Madness versus Darkness. Both of them heroic, but still, only one man can remain. And only the other two will have to settle for the other titles. So, yeah. Now we got another participant coming down the aisle. Who shall it be? Oh yes! 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 None other than the clown who don't mess around. The ultimate alumnus from SMF. And also mentor from, from UCW DCW development team. None other than the man himself, the myth. The legend in C.A.W. Ronald McDonald. And you know that he wasted little time going after the EXE? <clears throat> so now, oh you hear the crowd? They were chanting for the creeper there. The crowd really likes the creeper here in the Bronx, I'm telling you. And now, Alonso Harris. Just fully close lines the creeper out of this contention. And listen to the crowd rolling in disapproval of that. And Aluka gets Alonso Harris by that token. And while they both leave, we got another uh, new acquisition. Perhaps our biggest acquisition here in TAW, Osman Kirin, the Cannon Data. And he too was a little time going against EXC. Man, everybody, I don't think I don't think they like EXC very much here in TA. The, the locker room doesn't like TX, TM, uh, EXC very much, does it? Oh, did you see that nasty uh, shining wizard from Osman to, to EXC and a spinning um elbow just to, just to uh, overkill there. Now Ronald tossing Alucard into the roof. He wants to eliminate Alucard. Let's see if it happens. I mean, if anybody could get it done, it's Ronald being the absolute best technical wrestling all of, t of CAW. But this is not about techniques. This is about survival. And speaking of survival, who shall be the new one? Oh boy, coming fresh from the success of from the amount of success of all Man of Steel comes the other Kryptonian survival. The man who ruled with an iron fist in the, pa in the, in the Phantom Zone. And now, let's see if he can rule T.A.W. with that much iron fist. General Zod. And while Zod gets in, EXE gets kicked out, courtesy of Alucard. 
I smell the Bible over there. I definitely smell the Bible over there. <laughs> now we got Osman and Ronald going against each other. While Saad and Alucard settle their differences. And in the meantime, someone else is coming about. And I'm going to like, uh, be quiet for a while because my throat is starting to hurt. <laughs> And what do you know what? Another new prophet in the CW world makes its way. And he is the one. Gabe Eulaw. Who claims to be nobody's bitch. Let's see if he can back up that claim. Oh, in the meantime, we got Alucard who has just taken off General Salazar's contention. And all that taunting. I don't think that was wise, uh, Lord Alucard, because now you got Gabe Yulo trying to take advantage of it. And he just does! Gabe Yulo get, uh, gets Alucard out of this contention! And now we got, uh, he goes up for Osman. That wasn't a good idea. I'm sorry, that wasn't a good idea. Who's next? Ooh, another new, brand new prospect to the CAW world. A great signee to our TAW Corporation and one of the most sadistic, manipulative criminals in all of Latin America. He is Pedro Navaja. The one man who shows us that life is chock full of surprises. Well, he surprises by being the one who takes all the gold? Or at least one of the three? Let's find out. And as you see, we got the two newest prospects just going against each other. And then we also got uh, development skills of Ronald facing against the martial arts prowess of Osman. And we got another person coming down the aisle. Let's find out who it is, shall we? Oh boy, things are gonna get interesting. It's the Lord of the Decepticons himself. The man who rules by peace through tyranny, none other than Megatron. And while he comes in, Ronald McDonald gets Osman the Cannon Answer out of his contention. And he goes right after Megatron. I have no idea why. Then again, there's, there's supposed to be no idea. I mean, this is a Rumble style match, so you go after whoever you can go. And if you get somebody that you see that you don't like, that you go after him, I think that's even better. Build tension, I guess. Now we got another person coming in. Who shall it be? Excuse me. Oh boy! One of, whoa, one of the Disney Corporation's greatest villains makes his arrival here. None other than the original Greek god of the underworld, Hades. While he comes in, we got Gay Jewelaw getting kicked out of this contention by none other than Ronald McDonald. Who wasted a little time ago and after Hades, just after he just got in. And Pedro Navaja almost got Megatron out of here, but I can say it a billion times, and I'm never going to get tired of saying that. Almost, it's not quite enough here. Oh, he just landed the, the feet on Pedro Navaja's stomach. That must be pain and then so. I mean, Megatron is no small fly. We're talking about a, a big dude here. And then he jumps and stops at you? That must be pain and beyond pain. Speaking of that, who else can come and bring pain to this old roaster? None other than the Emperor of the Outworld himself. The most dastardly villain in Mortal Kombat history. And one of the toughest bosses in fighting history all, all over. Shao. Oh, who just got uh, himself a uh, load of power slam by Ronald McDonald there. And he makes him pay with that running clothesline. And uh, the action is going intense again, ladies and gentlemen. We can only hope to see who shall be the one left standing. And which, are the, which two shall we, uh, receive the other Magnum coronations here at TAW. And speaking of that, another candidate for that will make his way into this ring. And that, and that happens to be the blind assassin, the leader of the Assassin's Guild on Guilty Gear series, none other than Satoichi. 
Yeah, sure, the name is Sato One, but yeah, we're reading it as its, it's original Japanese name, so yeah, bear with me on this, please. And Satoichi going after Megatron and plants it with a face buster right in the canvas. Meanwhile, we got Shao Kahn trying to get uh, Ron McDonald out of there. Don't be, don't be asking for a timeout, Ronald. There's no time, such thing as timeout in wrestling, especially not in a Rumble style match. You clown. <laughs> well, he is a clown. So, <laughs> so anyway. Ooh, nice rejection by uh, Shao Kahn. But that doesn't do much because uh, Pedro Navarro still tosses him back into the turnbuckle. And the same goes for um, Ronald against Hades. Which, which gets rejected there? Oh, nice front flapjack by Pedro Navaja to Shao Kahn, who happens to be a big dude in the odds himself, you know? The action is getting so intense in this one. If you excuse me, I need to get a little breather. Oh, did you see that? He just lifted a little McDonald above his head with a military, um, with a t military press and toss Ronald McDonald out of his contention. And out of this contention are also Megatron and Pedro Navaja. Leaving on ladies three Magnum Masters of Evil and heal them to contend for the Magnum Prize. Well, at least until somebody else comes back, comes around. In a few seconds, of course. Now Sato gets Hades up, but he gets interrupted by Shao Kahn. And Sato drops the, uh, the forearm into Shao Kahn, but Shao Kahn he just gets out of it and starts punishing Hades. And Shao Kahn makes him, punishes him for ignoring him, <laughs> I guess. And here we go with a spinning suplex there. That's what, what I like to call the table breaker. <laughs> you know, because so many tables have been broken with that super. And speaking of supers, one of the most supreme masters of total evil comes here in the form of Onslaught, the Dream Killer. Who goes and wishes a little time going after Shao Kahn? Because he knows if he wants to make it big, just take out the one who's also about as big as you. Despite the fact that Onslaught is our biggest, um, physically most imposing um, superstar here. Or should I say just star in T.A.W. But still. Shotgun is no small fry. So. You know. He's just doing what everybody says. You know. Pick on someone your own size. <laughs> and in the meantime. Hades is trying to get rid of Satoichi. Is he going to get it there? Almost. That was very close right there. Ooh. Nice dragon screw by Hades to um, Satoichi there. And in the meantime, we got another exponent of the CAW world, another young exponent of the CAW world, may I say, and a brand new member to the newly established Nintendo Order, none other than the Bronx Bomber himself, Little Mac. Satoichi was wasting little time trying to get on him, but he pays for it with that nasty right. I think it broke a couple of teeth or something. Now he's going to try to use his strength. Hmm. What's up though, Ichi kind of said and uses some strand of his own with that rib breaker. Speaking of that, excuse me, speaking of that, someone else is coming down the line. Let's find out who it is, shall we? Oh man, we're having a and we're having a Nintendo reunion. And now comes another brand new exponent. Another brand new member of the, of the Nintendo order. None other than, ooh yeah! It's the Macho Fox himself, Fox the Cloud, dig it! Coming in. And now he's taking an onslaught. Well, maybe this Fox is true. Uh, it's like trying to bite on more than he could chew. If you get the, the expression. Oh, but he makes it right back in. And now the circle's again complete. Let's, let's. See who comes out on top on this 30-man rumble style for the three most magnum prices in TAW. Every price is a magnum price in TAW. But these three determine 
who is the man among the men in this organization. And we only got three people to win them. Oh, pedigree! Hey, close line, take it out. Little Mac, and at the same time, Hades takes out Satoichi. And that means only one member of the Nintendo is there. Well, maybe not for long. I mean, I don't know what order on Megas Link will be here, but he will be here. All we gotta do is wait to see when he comes out. In the meantime, we got this explosive rumble style match going on. Everybody kicking each other's asses. And they take it. That's not gonna happen. Because we already know who, who everybody is. Oh, drops the elbow into Oslot on Fox McLeod does. And in the meantime, Hades uh, gets rid of Shao Kahn. I think Hades is setting the record right now for most eliminations in this Rumble style uh, match. I mean, if, if he, even if he doesn't make the, the big three, he's still, you still gotta give it to him. He is like taking people out left and right by himself. You gotta give credit to the Greek out of the underworld for that. And speaking of Vegas Link, like we were before, <coughs> lo and behold, here he is. <laughs> The de facto leader of the Nintendo order makes his appearance now on this Rumble style match. Will he be the one to take the goal? Will he be his, his partner in time of his partner in time of Fox McCloud? Only one way to find out is for you guys to stay tuned. Oh! I thought it for a minute that was the CDT, but he only did that fisherman uh, drop once. So yeah, and now we're gonna find out who's next on the list. Oh, is he gonna get? Oh, I thought he was gonna do that military press to uh, Fox McCloud, but now he decided to just just hit him with a flapjack. And in the meantime, Oslo gets the uh, biggest link out of the contention. And while Vegas link leaves, another new prospect of the CAW world comes in, none other than Bam, Bam. Rubble! Yes folks, the son of Barney and Betty Rubble has been signed here to our TAW. The strongest man in Bedrock. He's also one of the baddest men in the CAW world. And, he, and I am so proud that he's here on TAW Triple Star Amazing Wrestling. But from that to him, that, to him be the crown, the champion of either of the three prestigious uh, titles, only time will tell. And speaking of time, time is up and someone else is getting here. And by that time, you know who that is. None other than the world's premier mercenary. The youngest class A in his league. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you straight from FBH, Faces vs. Hill, Strider, Hidu. And he wasted a little time going after Hades, but now he changes his sights on Onslaught. <laughs> I think it's like a rematch of Bob vs. Capcom 1 and 2, I mean 1 if you remember that. <laughs> and Batman trying to get it right of um, Fox McCloud. He's gonna get it done! He's gonna get it done! I mean he doesn't, he has, and he utilizes that. He utilizes that, what you call it? That power, that strength, yeah, that caveman strength to get Fox McCloud out of the contention. And he's gonna try to do the same. First time I had a hero. And speaking of Mastodons, oh boy, oh boy, and now we're talking big man in here. Here comes the world of Terror Man. One of the most horrific men in all of video games. Rick Taylor makes his way here on TAW. Will his strength be uh, will his strength be enough to win him one of the three titles? Let's find out, shall we? Meanwhile, we got Osla still picking on Hiru. Yep, definitely a Marvel vs. Capcom uh, rematch, <laughs> if there ever is one. <laughs> now Bam Bam utilizing his strength to try to take on Osla, but for some reason, um, Hiru interrupts. And speaking of that, Rick Taylor just gets Hades out of the contention. Well, congratulations on Hades. He was the one who lasted the longest on this thing, but he had to. Someone had to get him out. And that's someone with Rick Taylor. 
I mean, it would have been cool if he would have been left standing for the last one, but that didn't happen. And speaking of that, now we got another um, member added to the mix. None other than the, the Rocket Knife on Sephiroth. The Sephiroth Savior, Sparkstar. Another one of my all-time favorite video games, Rocket Knight Adventures. If you haven't played either the original Genesis or the Super Nintendo uh, sequel or the remake um, on the Xbox 360 and PS, um, PSN, you should do that now. Trust me, I recommend that. And I also recommend that you stick around because the action is still getting all kinds of crazy in this Rumble match to determine the three leaders of the pack here at TAW Triple Star Mason Wrestling. And who shall be the next one coming in? Ooh, another classic of the Genesis era. None other than the Atomic Runner himself, Chelna. And while Chelna makes it in, Strider here to get um, Rick Taylor out of his contention. Where did he find the strength to do that to a big man like Chelna? I have no clue. But someone else got eliminated also. Didn't notice who it was. But someone else got eliminated. My apologies for not paying attention to that, ladies and gentlemen. My sincere apology. Now Chelda going after Stratahiru. And now he's trying to get Stratahiru out. And it means that Oslo is trying to get um, Sparkster out already. Even though he just got in, but... Boxer will not let that happen, and neither will he do to ch with Chelna. Oh, but now Strider is Hiru hanging by a thread, and Chelna completes the cycle and gets Strider Hiru out of his contention. And now they're all ganging up on Sparkster, but Sparkster is not going to let himself get up. ganged out of, out of this contention. Now speaking of that, oh boy! Another legendary character from video games, Sensei Yomusashi himself, the Shinobi, has entered this man. Will he be the one to take the gold? Either of the golds? Let's find out. Now Chelna trying to get rid of um, Sensei Musashi, Musashi Sensei, but Sensei Musashi Sensei will not let him happen. Now we got this. Now we got Sparks of Toronto like. German suplex onslaught, like, are you real? Are you for real, man? <laughs> Actually, I think he's for real. He just kicked um, onslaught out of contention with a martial arts kick. And he got that ever so deadly reverse um, hurricane runner by the Shinobi. And speaking of video games, we got the most custom critic in all of the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, another proxy signee to the TNW roster, the angry video game nerd. And I know somewhere on the line he one might want to do a, an expose of one of these three characters he's facing now. Because right now, it's getting all kinds of crazy and intense. So much so that I need another break, if you'll excuse me. Oh, look at Chelna. Chelna is going to try to get out of the ABG and out of here. And he does! The Angry Video and they get kicked out. And so does Sparkster, courtesy of Shinobi. And while they two left, another entrant in, the, in this Rumble match comes in. None other than the most, ma the most maniacal man in Japan. The snake in himself, Yamasaki Eriyuji. And she know we waste this little time trying to take uh, Ryuji out. That didn't happen. But now Yamaz uh, Yamazaki gets a dose of double team courtesy of Shinobi and Chelda. And now I didn't last long at all, did it? <laughs> but look at Shinobi tossing off Chelda ball. And he uses the martial arts kick to get Chelda out of this contention. I'm not a racist. That's what's so insane about this. And while um, Chelo gets kicked out, now comes the most um, politically incorrect heel you will ever see and know. 
Ladies and gentlemen, another alumnus from of SMF Stonewall Federation, Kramer. And now Yamasaki Ryuji tossing Shinobi out of, it, out of the ring, trying to put him out of contention. Kramer was trying to assist, but Shinobi got in there <laughs> in the nick of time. Now Kramer getting behind now Shinobi, tossing Shinobi into the, into the corner. And now he wants to be the one to take him out. But for some reason, Yamasaki interrupted that. Now he's going to try again. And now we got our 30th and final participant. On a real world, lo and behold, look who it is. The Crown Prince of Heels himself. The Madman, straight from SCAW. The first Grand Slammer in SCAW. And he makes his appearance here at TAW, the Joker. And look at uh, Kramer hitting that neck breaker throw of Shinobi. And Shinobi retaliates with a snapmare. And he hits him with that soccer kick for good measure. Now we got these four contenders trying to pay for one of the three prizes here in TAW. Who shall take the big one? Who shall take the other ones? And which one of these four shall be kicked out to only leave three? left standing now she always trying to get Kramer out of the contention again and Kramer just hits um shoulders to the Tommy right there and she always gonna try it again and now uh, Kramer hanging by a threat and oh nice evasion by Kramer but he pays for it with that um judo hip toss by Shinobi drop kick to off Shinobi and now is Kramer gonna get it done is Kramer gonna get it done? And uh, Yamazaki was gonna try the same with the Joker, but that didn't happen. Oh, almost, but not quite. Kramer almost got Shinobi out of the contention. And he's gonna try it again. Gotta give the man credit for his persistence, right? He keeps pushing, now he keeps pushing. And is he gonna get it done? This time he does, ladies and gentlemen. Shinobi! gets kicked out of this contention and now we only got three people left who shall leave with the OD championship who shall leave with the multinational championship and who shall pick take the crown of crowns the ultimate championship of the world will it be Kramer will it be the Joker or will it be Yamasaki Ryuji who take the prize possessions here we shall find out right now Double team on Kramer right there from the Joker and Yamasaki. Now Yamasaki tossing uh, the Joker into the rope. Now Kramer taking advantage of that and Yamasaki trying to follow up. Are they going to get it done? Nope. <laughs> eye rakes to the both of them. Actually thumbs to the eyes to the both of them. Now Kramer tossing Yamasaki out. But the Joker interrupts that, that flow. And tosses Kramer out. Oh, Yamasaki with that, with that release of T-Bow. And the Joker landed on his head bad. I think that might affect how long he might stay here because that was a bad landing. You have to admit, that was a bad landing. Now the Joker and, Ryu, and Yamasaki Ryuji trying to get the Joker out of his contention and that, that fall might actually help with that. But the Joker never count the Joker out in any kind of situation. He always has a plan for everything, even though he says he doesn't. Speaking of that, Kramer's plan is beating the hell out of Yamasaki until he gets weaker enough not to hold on. Now he's going to um, switch his aim to um, the Joker, and I definitely don't think that was a good idea. Oh, head by Yamasaki to, the, uh, to Kramer there. Now Yamasaki trying to get Kramer while Kramer just got the Joker. And now they're going to try to get the Joker out of this contention. Try to double team on him. Try to make him the OD champion. Yes, folks. Whoever gets tossed in first in this one will become the OD champion. As you may know, as you heard President Eater earlier. Now we got another two-man DDT happening to Kramer. Now we got, ooh, nice shoulder block by Yamasaki. And now they're going to try to get Kramer out of this contention. The Joker and Yamasaki will. Are they going to do it? Are they going to do it? 
It looks like that. And they do, ladies and gentlemen. Kramer, because officially our first OD champion in TAW history. And now it's up to these two guys. Who shall live with the multinational? And who shall claim the prize? Who shall be the TAW ultimate champion of the world? Yamazaki tossing the Joker outside. Now pushing and pushing and pushing. Is he going to get it done? No, ladies and gentlemen. Like I said, never discount the Joker and his resiliency. Joker, Joker, his, ma his madness alone counts for so much. Imagine the rest of them. But Yamazaki has the same kind of madness. Is he going to get it done? And he does, ladies and gentlemen. We got our first multinational champion and our new ultimate champion of the world. Who is that man right there? Ladies and gentlemen, you are beholding history in the making. Yamazaki Ryuji, the snake head from Japan, is our very first TAW Ultimate Champion of the World. After going through all those people, congratulations to him. Ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we got for today. For everybody here at TAW, this has been Triple Star with Zero Zero Late.